Well, hello, and welcome back to the Design Studio. My name is Kat, and I am owner of Cat's Creations and More. And today, I'm going to walk you through a very whimsical... Uh, I'm trying to think of how I would phrase this. Uh, a whimsical design. So this could be great for a party decoration, um, for anyone who loves anything to do with, like, I don't know, and birthdays and Wonderland and things like that. So today I'm doing a design called White Rabbit's House of Cards. So I can't wait to show you the design. And because this design is going to have so many different components to it, I'm going to be uh, walking you through how to use different tools that maybe you hadn't seen before. So you're going to kind of get a little bit of everything in this tutorial. And not all of the ribbons are pre-cut because, in all honesty, I don't know how this is going to look and where everything needs to go. So um, let me cover a couple housekeeping items. If you want to save this tutorial, super simple. If you happen to be on Facebook, all you have to do is click the share button. It takes this tutorial and shares it to your Facebook page. If you happen to be on YouTube, you also have a share button, but then you can select whether or not you want to put it in a specific folder or just in your items for, I don't know, tutorials and stuff like that. Um, also, if you are on both uh, social media platforms, YouTube and Facebook, Facebook, if you guys can do me a favor, make sure that you are liking and following the pages. What this does is it turns notifications on for you so that the moment I go live, you should be notified if you happen to have your device on, on that particular platform, meaning you happen to have your phone on and it's with you, you should get some sort of notification from Facebook that says that, hey, Cats Creations is now live. You can click on that notification. So the like button is easy to find. It's the follow button that's challenging, but it's super simple. It's the three dots next to the like button. Click that, you'll wanna turn on follow, and then that way, both of those um, enables Facebook, Facebook to alert you whenever we have a new tutorial going on. YouTube subscribers, a little bit different. You'll just want to make sure you've subscribed to the channel. And then whenever I upload a video, which is now taking a little bit longer, thanks to Facebook. Um, but I will make sure that I get those videos uploaded to you as quick as possible. However, if you want to participate in a live, come join me on Facebook at Cats Creations Race. Um, every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific, every Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific, or just make sure your notification is on and you should be notified. So, um, big changes coming. Make sure you're subscribed to my email newsletter. The way that you do that is simply go to catscreationsandmore.com. I believe it's the second option down from that main page that allows you to sign up for the email list. We've moved it up so it's easier to find Make sure you sign up for that because there is a big announcement coming this weekend and uh, you'll be notified of it in your email. So I don't want you to miss that um, You uh, website. Let me go ahead and make sure that's all. Um, trying to get this thing to refresh my page. Let me go ahead and put in the website address really quick so you guys don't miss out on that. Also, if you missed any part of this information that I've just gone over with you right now, YouTubers, it'll be in the description box. Facebook um, subscribers, it will be in the post that is edited after this goes to replay. Um, let's see. I forgot what I was typing really quick. And then we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay. I think I've got it. Everything is spelled correctly. Um, Come on. No, I didn't want to click on it. I want to pin it. All right, we are good to go. Hi, Pam. Good evening to you. Hi, Cheryl. Welcome. Janice and Elizabeth, thank you for joining me tonight. So, super simple. I'm going to go ahead and pivot you down so you can exactly see what we're doing. I'm going to go over all the materials um, and then we'll go ahead and get started. So, give me just one second. I'll try to do this. I always try to do it to where the mic is not impacted and it's the mic is located on top of my Mevo. Hi Terry, rainy day in Maryland. Oh how nice. So I love the rain. We're supposed to get rain tomorrow. So our rain is coming. Oop, my 
camera wants to be a little finicky right now. It doesn't want to stay where I put it. All right, so we're going to be working off of a 15 inch. This is what's known as the tinsel tie work frame. It's got a three inch, I want to say elevation to it. So that's a lot of space to make up for. Um, I had thought about doing this on an evergreen wreath form, but it also has a three inch elevation just like this and it's all designed. So I was like, well, there's no difference at all. So you can get these, it's called a 15 to 25 inch work frame because when you start with it, the diameter I think is at 15 with all the tinsel ties sucked in. So from the outside ring to the outside ring, is 15 inches. However, it will make up to a 25 inch diameter wreath, depending upon the method that you're going to use. And ours is going to be very thick and very full. It's going to have a lot of different things in it that um, are brand new that just came out this year. So I can't wait to share them with you. And I'm trying to go a little bit larger on some of my tutorials so that you have a little bit of something to work with. Um, so we're going to start off with our 15 inch work frame. We are going to be toggling between a wide foil red deco mesh cut to 20 inch pieces and then also this black and white basket weave again cut to 20 inches. You're going to need nine of these and nine red and we're going to ruffle and place those in every single um, tinsel tie section alternating the color so that we have a red white and black color theme then to top that off we are going to be utilizing this brand new sign from craft outlet which is a white rabbit clock this is a waterproof sign so it is made of waterproof or plastic type of material so that you can keep this outside and you won't have any issues with you know MDF might uh, warp after time, um, but we're going to be using this. We are also going to be incorporating, um, let me grab these guys. These are brand new this year. These are called, um, they're called, like this one's a spade bunny and this one's a diamond bunny. So these are going to be incorporated with our white rabbit clock. And then we're gonna kind of theme everything around red, white, and black, um, hearts, the diamonds, spades, and clubs, because it is the White Rabbit House of Cards wreath. Um, we are gonna come in with a bunch of different ribbon that is going to go in this design, which two and a half inch ribbons, all the ribbon is from um, Craft Outlet with the exception of one. Um, so this was a ribbon that I bought I think two years ago for Valentine's Day, I've never used it, but I was like, ooh, sometimes you buy things and then the designs come later. So um, craft outlet for this, craft outlet for the two and a half inch. In addition to that, we're going to be using a black and white plaid. We're going to be using a lace glitter heart uh, ribbon, which is from Valentine's Day, a red lame, and then this black and white with raised white stitching. So do you see the color theme? Black, white, and red. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we're gonna do, like I said, is we're gonna alternate our pieces all cut with a wood burning tool. We're gonna do the ruffle method because we have a sign, we have two rabbits. What I'm thinking is that we're gonna get two bows on this and then a bunch of ribbon tails and um, ribbon tails and half bows and some other things. So this one might take a little bit, but I think it'll turn out really well in the end. Again, we're going against the way that the fabric mesh or the mesh curls so that we can get it to lay flat. And I'm going to go ahead and start with the top right here. We're alternating our colors so that we have all of the colors represented. And this is known as a tinsel tie because it's the more furrier, the thicker. 
stencil ties, whereas the ones that are thinner, more straight, are known as the pencil ties. All the deco mesh is from Craft Outlet. So again, we're just trying to get all the colors represented in this design, which is why we did it this way. I was like, you should have seen me earlier trying to pick out my colors. I had white mesh and I was like, should I just do a whole white face and then come in with some curls? And then I was like, mm. you know, at some point you actually have to put a stop to things because you could, it'll look great, but you price yourself out of selling it because you put so much into it and people will be like, oh, that's nice. I just don't want to spend that kind of money for it. So um, this is on the higher end of my grease, but you'll see why at the very, very end. And you'll be like, okay, but it's still a decent price. Okay. So right now we're filling in the middle, which is where our rabbit sign is going to line up. So we've got four black and white, four red wide foil deco mesh pieces. And I'm just overlaying these one on top of the other. One good twist is really all you need. So there's a benefit that the pipe cleaners don't have is we've got a full We've got a much longer piece to work with, so we can put a lot more in it. Okay, got our last piece of red on the top. So there is eight tinsel ties to the top, and there are uh, ten on the bottom. So it's kind of nice that everything is even. on both sides. At first when I counted them, I only counted 17. And I was like, oh, this must have been one of the old forms when they only used to come with 17. Okay, so there is that. We've got the whole top done. Now we're gonna work the very bottom of this design. Um, hi, Debbie. Hi, Patsy. Hi, Jan. Hi, Carol. Hi, Veronica. Lee says, love the sign and the rabbits. Can't wait to see it done. Elizabeth says, love the ribbon. Do you find it easier to use the tinsel ties over the Chanel stumps? Um, if I'm going to put a lot of stuff in it, yes. So, um, and sometimes I can incorporate that tinsel tie into the design as well. So now we're going to do the 10 on the bottom. So this is an open weave kind of like, um, like a basket weave almost. So these are basically going to fill up the side and the bottom. And you're gonna see me just kind of shift a bunch of stuff around. So right now I'm just gonna focus on putting the mesh in and then we'll redistribute things where we need to. So I'm just taking my mesh and pulling it towards me. It makes what's called a ruffle or a little bow tie. And then I'm going around and finding all my tinsel tie locations. And they're different because we've got 10 on the bottom and uh, 10 on the bottom. Let me get this one out of the way. Cause I always want to make sure I can find everything like these. I need to make sure I can find them when we get ready to add more things to them. So taking the ones on the top and just grabbing them together and maybe moving them to the center might be easy for you. Okay, so we've got another one kind of snuck. It's like snuck way down below. And then there's one right next to it. I think what I'd ideally like is a work frame that allows us to decide where we want to put the ties at. So you can see it's starting to thicken up the bottom. 
is just making things much thick, much more thick. I'm super excited to see this design. Because I can only kind of give myself like a little mini preview. Just playing with, you know, some of the ribbon, some of the mesh, but you still got to wait and put it all together to see what it looks like because it's always going to be much bigger than um, what you think. Meaning we started off with 15 inches and going on, uh, moving to the outside. Yes, Lee, can you believe it? I started on the inside. Unlike when we do our wreath of the month, we start on the bottom and then move it up to the top. What I'm doing is really focus, focusing on these, filling that section beneath it that, um, that's got that three inch gap, you know, we've got to make sure everything's covered. So you can lay them whichever way you want. You can lay them sideways. If you feel that that's going to give you more coverage, you can lay them straight up and down. You can kind of insert them in between. Oops. And so I'm always grabbing the sides kind of putting these ones a little bit sideways, but then also still up and down, just like that. Again, making sure that you can locate your um, stems so that it's easy for you when you go to put your ribbons or your bows in, or you need to identify where's my frame at we've got an upper and lower portion to the frame. So these are not my favorite work frames. I don't like the elevated ones because that's a lot of space you have to really make up for. Um, and this is never going to fit in a box smaller than 24 inches. This is automatically going to be a much more full wreath. Okay, one more of each, and then we can go ahead and start framing in our design. The rabbits that I have, the spade bunny and the diamond bunny, they are both uh, 20 inches tall. So if you think about that, we've got a 25 inch base, and both of our rabbits are um, 20 inches tall. Okay, so I'm just mixing and matching these down here. Why is it that I have? Oh, never mind. I'm like, I'm missing two more pieces. It was the two pieces I had for my mock up. I'm like, wait a minute, do I need to cut more? I have my mock-up pieces sitting off to the side because that kind of helps give me an idea of what my final design should roughly look like, but not a hundred percent. Okay, again, taking the top, rearranging some things. We've got one more piece of our red. Should have just put this in my bow jabra instead of just pulling it out and setting it on the counter, but we can make that work. Okay, we are set. We have all of our pieces in. There's our perfect 25 inch base. I haven't decided if I'm going to keep the tensile ties or not. So for now, they're just going to stay on. Um, so this is where we get a little bit technical. So we need to put our sign in the center. So this is a plastic sign. So can't really use the metal hole punch on here. We could use an adhesive tie 
and add E6000, we could add, um, what do I call it? Um, emblem tape, the kind of tape that goes on your emblems that go on your car so that it shouldn't come off. It works better than just uh, the regular adhesive tie, but I really want this to last. So this is where I'm gonna show you a new product to use on your plastic signs when you for sure don't want them all to come off. So before I do this, let me get rid of all this mess. Kind of feels like Christmas when you have all the tinsel tie pieces. All right, we are gonna be utilizing a device called a, um, this is a Hardell cordless rotary toolkit. <clears throat> Basically what it is, is this is a pretty girl's uh, hand tool. So obviously it's pink, comes with a USB charger, whole bunch of drill bits, sanding bits, cutting bits. We're gonna use this to drill a hole in the bottom of our sign so we don't have to break out your husband's drill. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna find the drill bit in here. So mine is pretty big. The first thing you're going to do is click that center button. That allows you to insert the drill bit into the center and then go ahead and tighten it down. Now, when I released the silver button, it has locked that drill bit in for me so that I'm good to go. It does have a light on it so that if you're, I don't know, need additional light, it does light up wherever it is that you are utilizing the tool. It does have four speeds on here. We're only gonna adjust it to the second speed. So I've already done one tool here, or one hole here at the bottom, just to make sure it worked and that I didn't crack the sign. So I'm gonna go up right in here, right in this fancy little part of our design, and we're gonna go ahead and add a hole. So the first thing I wanna do is click it on. So plus, okay, there's, it's really light. So we've got it going, I think this is five speed. I'm gonna leave it about here. We're gonna go ahead and put our hole right here in the center. And if you want, you can kind of hone it out a little bit. Uh, we've got the perfect hole in here. And we are good to go. Turn it off, push the silver button. It allows you to unscrew this little end so you can pull your drill bit out. Put your tool away, put your drill bit away, and now we are good to go. And we will have a sign that will not come off in hot or cold, regardless what happens to the adhesive or glue that we add. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and attach this using floral wire. I'm gonna use about 14 inches of 22 gauge floral wire. And I will link that little handheld tool um, in both the YouTube description box, which means if you're watching this video on YouTube, click on the video and then below this video is a little box that lists everything, what it is, what we're doing, that whole kind of thing. And you'll find the link for that there. Okay. Here we're simply going to do the same thing we do all of our other holes, is we're just going to build it right over the back of our hole, about three or four twists. And then this allows our sign to not be a spinner. And trust me, if you're like me and you do Christmas ornaments, like the little wood slice ornaments, that thing, putting a hole in your wood, is gonna be like heaven sent. That's what I used it for this year. Just adding little holes to my little wood slices so I didn't constantly have to ask my husband, hey, can you um, can you drill a hole in this for me? So we have our sign. We're gonna add our business card to the back. We're gonna add our glue. Just like so. I wanna make sure that I'm putting it the right way. Right there. Just so they know where they got that from. And we're ready to add this 
to our design. So we're going to bring this over. This is going to fit nice and snug right down to our top rail. So I'm simply going to run this in and make sure that I have one on both sides of each. I'm just going to kind of hold that down so I can feel about how deep do I need it to go. And I'm just going to give it one twist just in case I have to adjust it. I told you this year we were going bigger. Okay, same thing here. Taking, pushing down my sign. Nice twist here. Okay, we have our sign on. I'm gonna get rid of the sign holder so we have more space so you don't lose out on any of what we're doing. Again, make sure I have all my twist ties so that if I need to remove them or I need to add embellishments to them, that I know where they are. Just makes it easier so I don't have to go on a treasure hunt there. Okay, so this is what it looks like to you. White Rabbit, House of Cards. All right, now we are going to add in our bunnies. So we have, they're made out of, like, I want to say this is styrofoam. He's a little bit of a, a stiff, like foam head, um, felt wood, little felt down here. He's got posable ears, so you can pose his ears any which way you want. But we're going to take one and we're going to put one. Let's move his ears up for now. I'm going to lay them right in between the sign. Um, this one actually goes, let me get the red one in. Red one's going to go here. Just got to move everything out of the way so they can lay right inside. Here's that one. I'm like, they have to go opposite, opposite cat, which means one goes this way. The other has to go that way one a little bit higher. So what I'm thinking is we're going to put a bow up here and we're going to put a bow down here towards the bottom, like right where this is. So an upper bow and a bottom bow for our rabbits. But I always like it if I can find a way to secure these down without pumping them full of glue. I'm not a glue person. I don't like pumping it full of glue and hoping it'll last. So what I'm going to do is go around his neck. I know it's kind of brutal. I'm going to take my floral wire. I don't want to pull too hard because I don't want to pop his head off. Like if it's glued in. I'm going to go ahead and fasten him down to my frame with my floral wire. Should have probably made it just a touch longer. I just need to get the shorter end. So I'm pushing in and tightening my floral wire right where I need it to stop. And then, like I said, his ears are posable so we can move those out of the way. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to add a little bit of floral wire to one of his legs and secure him to the frame. So I'm going to probably go with the inside one because they're just like little metal rods. You can't bend his feet. You can't pose his legs. But I'm just kind of sliding that in, making sure I have even pieces. Slide that to the back. Kind of tuck that up front. Trying to make sure that I get that in there nice and snug. Moving that right up underneath. Let's go ahead and get this secured in and then we'll get him repositioned. So it's all going to that top center rung. Let me get this piece on this side in. 
kind of helps if your wire is straight and not bent like mine was. Okay. Sometimes just wiring them can be the most complex task that you do. But I'd rather wire them in than glue them in. Because I'm like, what if I want to take them out and use them on something else? Uh, needle nose pliers. Let's get the minute ones. I'm simply just moving that up so it's right underneath the cards this way in his arms pose as well. So that guy's in. Let's go ahead and get this one in. Pull that in. Make sure that we have enough for his head. Oh, thanks, Darlene. She says, I'm a newbie. I love this, and you do a beautiful job. Thank you. I appreciate that. Again, sorry, Mr. Rabbit. Okay, one twist. Securing it to the top part of our frame. This time I made sure we have enough so that it's easy for me to uh, poke that through. I don't want to twist it too hard because like I said, I don't want to snap his head off. Oh, thanks, Jamie. She says, what a unique design and cute. That is so awesome. I'm hoping it works. So like I said, it's so much fun because you can take them, you can pose them, they can look like little little soldiers. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to do this right around this leg. So I just try to make sure that it's sufficient. And then I'll twist it around to the back side. We'll go ahead and get him all wired. Um, which is why you can see people you know, just if I took hot glue, slathered it all over the back, and tucked it in, um, obviously it would make the design go by much quicker. But if I ever wanted to rearrange it or take them off, like you could use this, you know, this could be a nice wreath for a um, child's party. And you can take these off. Once you're done, I completely missed my frame. Hang on one second. I'm just going to go up and around. There we go. Got to make sure we're hitting the frame. Because if we're not hitting the frame, there's kind of no point. We're going to take this. I'm just going to readjust my wire to the top. We are all set. So he has the spades. He has the diamonds. Um, how that got over there. Ooh, see what I'm telling you? That sometimes your deco mesh just comes out. Like this one came out right here, right under his head. So with the tensile ties, we want to make sure that we're really securing them in nice and tight. One complete twist. So no matter what we do, how we're functioning with that, that's kind of what it looks like right now. We have our rabbits, soldiers, that are all set already. Make sure I put all my tools back so they don't wander off my table and into the trash can. Okay, so we are creating a bow. 
and I want to put one bow, like we're going to probably end up getting rid of this one. I think I'm going to put a bow down here at the bottom. I might take this guy and move him up a little bit higher so that I can put the bow here. So let me undo him and just move him up ever so slightly. So I'm going to pull him up and we're going to move him up just like that so that we can occupy this for our, um, for our bow. So we can kind of have a bow in the upper, the upper left, upper right, lower left. So one was supposed to go high and the other supposed to go low. And I'm hoping I just didn't relocate them back down to where they were. Um, okay, where'd you go? Okay, got them. So move you up a little bit higher. We're going to move him out more to the right, so that looks a little bit better. We have this guy leaning in, this guy leaning out. This all looks give me an opportunity to fix his wire. Okay. Now if I can untwist, I had it twisted underneath, and we'll get him move down, secure down, sorry. Oop, this is outside piece. I just need to make sure I have, I'm trying to get the wire through, you know, the lower half of your tinsel, making sure that you have this up where you want it. I've got to get this other last piece in. So I'm just working with the tinsel tie that happens to be right there as well. Okay. Stay up. His pant legs are just, on this one, are just a little bit bulky because they've glued they glued it. Okay. I've got both of them down. Both of them are on the right side. Moving this back up. is all securely fastened. So now, I know it doesn't look like I really moved him much, but I did. So we're, we're gonna put a bow down here. We're gonna put a bow up here. Um, so let's go ahead and make the bow and then we can decide, hey, where are we going to add some attachments? Um, so let's do the bow first. This is getting moved off to the side. Again, a big mess. We're going to use the Bodabra and create our bow using all the ribbon that I showed you earlier, which is all from Craft Outlet, with the exception of this one, which came from Kringle Designs. We're going to start with the Harlequin first. We're going to do a dovetail end. So we're going to cut from the folded side to the wired point. Okay. And then we're going to go in right here to the 10 inch line. I'm 
gonna zoom in so you guys can see this a little bit better. There we go. 10 inches in, I'm gonna gather my ribbon and I'm gonna twist. And I'm gonna place this inside my Bodabra. And then I'm going to measure out what I think should be about five and a half inches for my loop length. So I'm gonna take my Bodabra and make sure it lines up on that 10 inch line. And then I'm going to stretch this out and make sure that the end of my ribbon is five and a half inches. So it needs to come right there. Make sure my ribbon's not pinched. We're going to do the same on the other side. This way it's going to yield exactly the same size loops on both sides. And then we're going to go back out to 10 inches. We're going to cut that. We're going to dovetail the end. So just wired edges together, cut from the folded side to the wired point. So that is the first ribbon in our six ribbon bow. Now we're going to take that heart print and this one again, dovetailed edge, wired edges together, cut from the fold to the wired end. This one is gonna measure, our tail will be nine and a half inches. We're gonna twist, place this on the inside. And this time we're gonna go with five inch loops. So just kind of guesstimate, place it inside, line it up on your 10 inch line, stretch it out, and if you need to, just make any adjustments, pull more ribbon if you need to, um, pull more ribbon back if it's a little too large. Right in here. And then we're gonna go back out, oops, to nine and a half inches. And we'll dovetail the end on that. that bow is in. Now we are going to do um, the raised white stitching, inch and a half. We are going to do nine inch tails and four and a half inch loops. Make sure I don't lose my pin. So nine inch tail, twist, Place it on the inside, measure for your loops. So line it up on your 10, stretch it out, make sure it lines up at four and a half inches. Do the same thing to the other side. And then we're gonna go back out to nine inches. and dovetail the end. And that one's done. Is this wreath like part two of your previous Alice wreath? Uh, I guess, but they're two totally different designs. The other one I did was a custom order for a family member of ours that was having a Alice in Wonderland Mad Tea Party birthday and so they needed me to do a wreath for them which I did um so this one's just a totally different theme it's more house of cards white rabbit this is more about the rabbit the other one was more like about the tea party okay this red lame we're gonna do at eight and a half inches and we're also doing four and a half inch loops on this one. I like that little pop of the sparkle, but I didn't want to do glitter. So I used this lame from Craft Outlet. So here's a shortcut. Put your fingers in both the loops and pull because we already know that the bottom one is measured equally at four and a half. And do the same on the other side, little shortcut. But we still need to measure out the last eight and a half inches 
I love the Lame because it gives you the look of glitter without the mess. And this wreath is available for sale. It's at the website pinned to the bottom. If you want to make it yours, because I don't do, I don't know if you guys know this, but all of my designs are one of a kind creations. I never repeat the same design twice. So this will be the only one of this type that I'm making. We're gonna use the checker, checkerboard print, I guess, black and white. This one we're measuring at eight inches and our loop length is only gonna be four inches. So we're gonna simply place that inside, measure, make sure we're at four. This ribbon's like not my favorite because this is that polyester weird blend where they've started to make the ribbon cheaper, but it also doesn't, it's just, you fight it more than you should. Okay, so we're gonna go right at eight inches. Got my line. That's why I kind of sandwiched this in the middle. Because even though it's got really nice, wired edge the ribbon itself just wants to do whatever it wants to do okay um and now we're gonna do the heart ribbon which is super thick this is really good quality ribbon which i'm hoping they continue with this is seven and a half inches for our tail length and we are doing a three and a half inch loop. So same process, just kind of eyeball where you think three and a half might be, verify it. Do it on the other side. I feel like that was a little short right there. And then we're gonna go back out to seven and a half inches and dovetail the end on that one. So first bow is finished. Okay, Kat, where'd you just put the pin? Here we go. And pins. I need to have like a little magnet thing that my pins just sit on. We're gonna grab a red pipe cleaner. We're gonna do our U shape. going to go up and over. We're going to drop our pipe cleaner down. We're going to hold the bottom and then twist. Okay, just like so. Okay, we're going to get the fluff board. Let me look at our wreath and we're going to make some decisions. So number one, the room that's going to go down here at the bottom needs to be a bottom bow um, so that that goes here and the one up here top bow that we might we'll see how it goes so we're gonna do one a top bow and one a bottom bow we'll start with the bottom bow because those are the easiest so we're gonna fluff it Set this over to the side Okay, fluff board. Let's get all this stuff moved so we don't need it out anymore. So this is just a 24 inch by 24 inch by one inch thick, just pre-cut lumber. I just put a nice little laminate on the top. So we're gonna use our C hook. We're gonna loop that through our pipe cleaner and all it does is keep our board from moving or the ribbon from leaving the board sliding around so with the bottom bow it's super simple we're going to pull all the tails to our bow down to the bottom so this is what i call the bow recipe that is two looks one bow because it can give you two totally different looks 
just depends on which way you decide to fluff it. So we've grabbed all of our tails, moved those down to the bottom, and then for fluffing a bottom bow, it's really super simple. You're going to start with the top two. You're just going to bring up the top two, and you're always going to go opposite. So we're going to do them like this, elevate them and lift. Same thing here, I'm going to pull the red, so that is under the black and white. I'm going to move this one so it's just under the red. And I'm going to get down in there and make sure my ribbon's not pinched. Here, opposites, we're moving the red down so I get my fingers inside and the black is up to the top. Okay, and then the bottom, we're going to be moving the gold up here to the top and we're doing the black and white at the bottom and then here it's going to be opposite we're just going to do opposites on that and then you're just going to fluff that to till it gives you a look that you're happy with you know your look might be way different than mine but you definitely want to make sure that you're Ribbons have some life in them. They're not flat. And then to create your curls, you're just going to run them through your fingers. So I'm going to go through and find all of them. And that's how you put your little curls back in. It's going to look a little different because it's sitting on a flat board. When we add these to a elevated wreath, it's going to have a much different look. And then you just go ahead and move them around whichever way you want them to present. And then this gives you your bottom bow. So we're going to go ahead and take this one off. Okay. So it's going to go off the opposite way I put that on. And lucky for you, I already created the second one. We just haven't fluffed it. Exact same formula. We're gonna go ahead and loop this one on. And this one, we are fluffing for a top or a corner bow. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at the bottom this time. And we're gonna take the very bottom tail. We're gonna pull the tail to the right and the loop to the left, okay? Then on the opposite side, the lower half of our bow, we're going to take the tail, move the tail to the left, the loop to the right, so that if I pull all this up, they're basically opposites of each other. So the loops are opposite of each other, and the tails are opposite. They go like crisscross. And then from here, we're gonna go opposites as we bring each one down. So we're gonna pull our loop to the right, tail to the left, go over to the bottom, move our tail, loop, nope, tail to the right, loop to the left. So as you can see, it's staggering loops from tails. Now you can come in and cut the tails if they're too long. This is just what I call these are like my standard bows for me. What it yields is an 11 inch in diameter bow measured from the largest um, loop, not the tails. Okay. Then from here, I'm going to mix it because I kind of want the black to be over here. Otherwise, we're just going to get all red on one side and then all black and white on the other. So I'm going to mix it. And you can do that. Just whatever you do up here. Do the opposite on the bottom. Okay, then up here, we're gonna do a red like this, and we're gonna do opposite here. Okay, so all the tails are coming around, all the loops are coming around. Here, we're gonna go back to here, and we're gonna add black and white to that. We're gonna separate our black and white, and then we're gonna follow the red, and then from here, we're going to follow the red. 
Okay, so now if you look at it this way, I think I got it. There's all the tails, there's all the loops. It makes it really easy for you to figure out where you wanna lay your sign based on this presentation. And like I said, you can cut each of these um, tails to end at the length of your loops if you want. This is gonna be really short tails. I find it's easier to cut them after the fact um, than to cut them before. Because if you cut them too short, then you know, you've know you wasted ribbon. So to fluff, now we're gonna do the same thing. Pick up the top two, pick up the top two. We're gonna ignore the tails if we can. And then we're gonna do the same thing here, kind of like the black and white off to the side and the red between these two. But if you don't like it, you can mix them up whatever way you want. Here's my black. And then here's my red. I'm just opening them up. And then we're going to do the same down here. Soon as I can open these. I just thought for time's sake, you didn't need to see me recreate the same process for another bow but it'd be fun to watch the fluffing process for another bow. So figure out where you want everything to lay and then to put your curls, you're gonna do the same process. You're just going to run them through your fingers. And I'm constantly doing this all the time. Whenever I walk by something that has ribbons in it and the ribbons are lifeless or they're cranked, they're crinkled. Um, I'm always re-fluffing everything. It drives my husband crazy. He's like, why are you doing that? I'm like, cause these people are trying to sell a product. It doesn't present well. If people think that that's as good as it's going to get, even though it's not my product. Okay, I'm gonna pull some of these over to the side so that we have a little bit represented everywhere, a little bit of black and white, and a little bit of the red. Just like so. And that is our bow for what I call like a corner bow. You'll see when we go to put this on, it's gonna be for like a upper right or left, or lower left or right would be a bit different. Let's move our bows over. Add our bows to the design, and then we'll see what it's going to do. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to take this tinsel tight out, but I want to give it a couple twists because we saw what happened with the one mesh. Because our bow is going to go here, so we don't need to have a tinsel tie there that's just going to mess everything up. So I'm going to take and tuck that back and down. We're going to take our bottom bow. We're going to add our bottom bow. Kind of. It's going to fit in between his feet a bit. Let's go ahead and here's pipe cleaner, right? This is why I like floral wire. Pipe cleaners, it's got to go through all those layers of mesh to get to the bottom. Let's see, can we get it on the top? Maybe, if I move it over. I just don't wanna make sure that it's up too high. I'd rather it be a little lower. Okay, I'm just gonna lightly twist that in and then I can move all my ribbons around. So now, Okay, just like so. There's our bottom bow. And see what I'm saying? They'll, they'll fall all the way around our wreath design. So they'll just kind of cascade off the bottom. And that'll kind of tuck in around his feet a bit like so. So there's our top bow, or sorry, our bottom bow. We're gonna come in here and try to sneak this in. I'm going to kind of push his ears off to the side. We're going to give this another 
twist or so. Do the same thing. We're going to remove this tinsel tie. We're going to tuck that back on the inside. And we're going to attempt to stick this in. What I'm going to do is focus my ribbon loops between their heads. That's my goal. So this is where knowing where everything is. I'm gonna kind of come in here with this. This is kind of right where I want my, my bow to wind up. So now I just gotta secure it to the frame. Um, I had it. It's like first you have to work through one side of your pipe cleaner, then you got to work through the other. I'm going to tuck some of my ribbon under my rabbits, just like so. And then we're going to go ahead and, and we'll tuck this in and under his head. Well, it's being stubborn. That's okay, we can work with that. Okay, let's go ahead and remove this tinsel tie right under this rabbit's head. can get that to lay super nice right alongside the rabbit. You can have his ear come up, you can have his ear go down, whatever you want his ear to do. There we go. There's that. There's our bottom. And it's kind of hard to see the whole thing because now it's gotten really large right? A lot large. So we're going to work with the, the angle that we have. So now we've got a couple options out here to the side. There's some tinsel ties that we're going to address. We have some options. We can put um, ribbon tails in here, which I have kind of cut um, for like a prelim, like, oh, if I was going to add them, this is where they would be, but I'm not sure how long they need to be. So since that is a spade, I'm not sure if I want to put spades by the hearts or the hearts by the spade. So I have my ribbon tail cut to 14 inches. I'm going to find the middle section by folding it in half. I'm going to tuck that in. It's kind of weird to have to work around his little, his little pull. So I'm going to fan these out just like so. So we have a little bit. I kind of like the fact that I went with the red on the black and we'll do the black on the red there. Not sure <laughs> we're going to be able to get the red ribbon in there. So I did do 19 inch pieces to do half bows. So I'm just bringing that together going up about two inches from the top. I'm going to see if we can get this in. If not, I might just turn that into um, a ribbon tail. So we'll see what, what it will allow me to do. Looks like it might work. I'm just trying to get this one. I'm trying to work under the rabbit like so and have those kind of fan out to the side because they don't want to completely cover the deco mesh. So that works. So now we're going to go to the other side right here with this rabbit and we're going to do the exact opposite with our Harlequin and we're going to do that same place right under our rabbit. We're going to fan that out. We're going to take our half bow, which is a 19 inch ribbon piece. The dovetail ends are already cut. We're going to go in about two inches. 
We're going to tuck that in. Okay. We'll go ahead and open up one of the loops. Because there's only one. And then I'm just going to kind of fan that out. So we get both presented there. And then again, you can do whatever you want with the rabbit's ear. It's entirely up to you. You can kind of position them any way you want. And then we're going to look at some options for what are we going to do with the rest of the, um, whatchamacallit, the tinsel ties. I do have one under here and I'm thinking, what if we just added um, a ribbon tail? So let me go with 14 inches just kind of snug underneath it may not work if so then we can just utilize this around the outside i'm going to do a shortcut and do a quick dovetail on both ends we're going to go up pinch that in the downside is his legs don't move at all so i'm going to have to kind of finesse this up and just lay that in. I'm gonna to try to pull this out to the side so I can do my quick twist. And then we're gonna to try to get this to lay where I want it to. And then we're gonna remove this tinsel tie. So I kind of like that. So I'm going to remove my tinsel tie. I'm going to tuck this end down. He's going to need a brushing to get all that stuff out from underneath. I'm going to do the same thing right here. I'm going to do a ribbon tail with the Harlequin ribbon. It's just going to look like an extension of the bow. So 14 inches, and here's how you can do a double dovetail. So just bring your ends together, fold them in half so that wired edges are on one side, and then we're still gonna cut from the wired side, or the folded side down to the wired point, and then now we have um, a dovetailed end on both. So I'm gonna tuck this in right in here. Gonna kinda go underneath my bow. I'm gonna remove this tinsel. I just made sure we twisted it on there enough. Take that, fold the end down, and then we're just going to fluff those tails. So we have that, just like that. So far, I'm liking it. Okay, this is what we have thus far. Okay. This one underneath, was this the one that I removed our tinsel tie to? Oh no, it's way under here. There it is. Because I was like, I need to add. See what I'm saying? You've got to make sure you know where those things are. We're gonna add our Harlequin ribbon to this side so we can finish the look on the top. What do you think of the design concept thus far? So we're just doing that shortcut to cut both sides at the same time. We're gonna tuck this right underneath the rabbit's foot or his leg, and then we're going to cut those tinsel ties off. So I have to kind of go down under his little sword, two twists, cut those off. Now we'll take that and tuck that back down so that we can have our ribbon represented for us. So there's the top thus far. I know it's kind of hard to see. 
it'll look much better when we put it up on the board. Let's see. There you go. It's kind of like that, I think. So, um, the one thing we have to do is we have to add ribbon tails to the outside, knowing that we have 10 down here along the bottom. I'm just going to cut these really quick. Look at that mess from all the tinsels. Thank the Lord for trash cans. So really quickly, we're going to cut five of these because we have 10 on the bottom. So we're going to do five of each set. So cut to 14 inches for our Harlequin. Two more right there, 14. And at 14 again. And then it's super simple. We can just grab a couple of them, fold them in half, dovetail them all at the same time. This is why I said, normally I have them all pre-cut, but I didn't know, hey, how wide is that gonna be? Um, are we gonna need them? How many ribbon tails? How many half bows are we gonna need? Because this was a totally new design. Okay, those are done. We are adding half bows. Right? Yes. 19 inches for the inch and a half. There's one. There's two. Three. Four. And five. There are so many different design possibilities you could do with that particular um, wreath. You don't have to use all the rabbits. You don't have to use uh, the sign. You could um, simplify it and not go kind of over the top. But I really wanted this particular design to be a little higher, like a little bit more complex than my normal wreath designs, which are simplified. I really wanted to challenge myself by taking this one completely out of the box. Because as wreath makers, we need a good challenge. <laughs> Cheryl says, I don't think this will stay in your shop over 24 hours. Well, that would be the idea, right? Ideally, that would be the goal is uh, for it to not be in there because I love the idea that somebody can use this as a party decoration um, and oops, there was my pin. So I've got those. Let's do our heart ribbon. Same thing. We're going to do five of these and then we'll do our red lame we'll add these and then we'll add the last embellishment as if we could fit anything else on to this design these are like one of the designs where i'm like i could have made this into a, a tutorial i could have done this just for a private group but those of you that have been in my public group for a while I just really wanted to show you what you're capable of and that you can do hard things you can try designs that really challenge you and I like being able to just do it raw in front of you right here on camera so you see, I don't have anything prepared. I don't have anything um, done. 
we're almost done. I thought about cutting my ribbon and I was like, well, what if I don't need it? Then I've cut into all that ribbon and um, I can't use it for bows because it's already pre-cut. We're gonna do these ones really quick, the lame, and then we'll be done with all the ribbon. You'll still see all the mesh, but at this stage when you're doing a design like this, the mesh is your base. You can still see it when you're physically here and looking at it, you're like, oh, I can see the mesh. Sometimes in the photos, you're like, well, I don't see the mesh. It's all covered up by ribbon. It's just kind of what your eye is drawn to. Your eye is drawn to the bows. It's drawn to the rabbit sign. It's drawn to the little whimsical bunnies off to the side. Let's see if we can just cut all of these at the same time. Since this is a thinner ribbon, I think we should. They're pretty heavy duty scissors. They should be able. Yep. I just need to make sure they all, they all fan correctly so that I can get them all lined up. Alrighty, everything is cut. Now it's time to assemble everything and get all these pieces put together. There we go. Okay, so you might be asking, where is she putting that? So on the outside bottoms, Remember where we put in our lower level mesh? We are adding ribbon tails to those because right now it just looks blah. So I'm adding a combination of a ribbon tail. So we're just placing that in and then I'm putting the inch and a half black and white ribbon on the top and like little half bows. Do I have to? No, I could have left that just done and said, well, you're not really gonna see it anyway. Well, you kind of do, cause you can kind of see what I'm doing here. You can see the tails kind of coming out the backside. Now we're gonna do the red. So what I'm doing is exactly like this. Just adding those into the lower five that go around the bottom. We're adding the red on the red and we're adding the black and white on the black and white. Or should I change that? Ooh, should we change it? I'm going to do it. We do it now before we get started. Yes, I think I should. Okay. So I'm going to put the black and white on the red for more contrast for visual interest and we'll put the red on all the places where we have the black and white mesh. For extra dimension. Okay. This should go fairly quickly. I told you this was going to be a long tutorial because it was an over the top design. And we had to redo one of the bunnies because it was too low for me. So let me show you what I'm doing. So right here at the bottom, we're adding um, ribbon tails and half bows and ribbon tails and half bows to each of the ones around the outside. So these will create little fans of color that extend just beyond the edges of our deco mesh, but you still see all the deco mesh. Okay. And this is why I told you, you need to know where all your tinsel ties are because it just makes the process so much easier if you don't have to go hunt them down. Okay, we're 
we're adding our second set of the red hearts with the lame. And I'm leaving these tinsel ties on these ones. And I'm just fanning, fixing my bows as I'm working under the bow again. Now we're going under our red. And we're doing our half bows. Just like so. They're like 3D awareness ribbons. I just call them half bows because they only have one loop. So technically you can't call them a bow. But they are just like 3D awareness ribbons. Okay. And we're over here for a red. We're coming around the bottom. We finished the top. The top is all done. Oops. Okay. Our lame half bow. Two inches from the top, just pinch in. It's kind of stuck underneath his little sword. I'm trying to make sure that the tinsel ties too kind of come down. Okay. This one will be a challenge to get it way underneath that rabbit. Let's see. I got the tinsel ties. So they're to the outside. So you'll see that now that's elevating that color back to the outside. May not be able to see the half bow as well, but we will make sure that it's done. Because if you're the client, wouldn't you look around the whole design and be like, hmm, you kind of skipped right here. You focused on the whole top, but then you kind of like skipped out on the sides. Okay. Now we're going under our bow. And yes, I know it's pointless because the bow is there, but again, it's that whole premise. It'll look like an extension off of our bow. Oops. Okay. We fix this one. We have our chisels down. Have three left and then we're done. Okay, almost down to the one each and then we're finished. Well, except for the last embellishment. Do you guys have any ideas what the last embellishment might be? This has been a long tutorial, a long tutorial, probably one of my longer tutorials. Okay. We've got our last red and then our last black and white. We're done. Oh, 
Uh, this is not a storm door friendly wreath. I can tell you that. So just in case you're like, will that fit on the storm door? No, not at all. Okay. Um, so I saw, um, Veronica said hearts. Elizabeth says scatters and fillers. That would have been a good idea. I would have actually added them while I was working if I was going to add them and you could add them onto the bottom of your tinsel ties if you want it. Last one. It's gonna go right here next to the side of our rabbit. And next week too, we're doing another over the top design. I haven't even figured out how I'm going to make it. I'll be working on that this weekend, trying to figure out the concept of how to do it rather than here's another simple design for you to make okay last one making sure all of my ribbons are fanning down out and around I know it's so hard to see, but wait till we put this on the door. It's going to look fabulous. Okay, last little design element. Optional. Don't need to do it. Don't have to do it. But um, since this design theme on this was called White Rabbit's House of Cards, meaning the cards here, we can also come in. Actually, I've kept a thing of playing cards here on my, um, in my workshop so that if you wanted to, you can kind of come in, you can kind of tuck in a little bit oops, of cards like this. If you wanted to mix it up since we have spades, um, you can come in and add, ooh, let's add a red. Let's add this under here and add this underneath that rabbit a little bit. We can tuck them into the sides if you wanted. I'm trying to find another. I want a queen of hearts in here somewhere. I'm trying to find where did I put my queen of hearts. Hang on a sec. I had one. So these are just standard playing cards. When I was doing a poker themed wreath, um, I had all these cards for that. I thought I had it. Hmm. I know I had it. Let's see. I have them sitting off to the side though. I'm gonna make sure I didn't leave some. Here it is, still in the box. Um, so we can just do this one. There's the queen. And then we can add another. Let's add another spade. We can add some diamonds in there too to find here like just no oh, that's clubs there we go like a nine we can kind of tuck this one up in here like so so we have that we have that we're gonna tuck one more up here like right in here like an ace of hearts so I kind of like that initial layout so I added one, two, three, four, five, five cards, just cause it's supposed to be, let's add diamonds in here. Um, we have the queen of diamonds. Let's, um, I didn't want that one. 
try to see. Here's a 10. Nope. What a queen of diamonds in there. So I have a queen of hearts. Eh, sorry, maybe we'll do king. Looks better. King, queen, ace, ten, nine. Okay. So I'm just going to actually hot glue these in right on the back tips of the corners. So just these ones, yes will be the only thing that I glue onto this design. Because I don't want them going anywhere. And here's our queen of hearts. So I'm just kind of tucking them in, kind of tucking it under but you can still see them. Here's our nine of speeds. I'm trying to think of which, which corner do I need it? Right there, this corner. Because this is themed around White Rabbit's House of Cards. this one right inside okay we are done do you guys want to see it on the door because it's just so flat to see it like here I'm gonna go ahead and pivot you up real quick hello I want to make sure okay we're gonna go ahead and put this up it is full so this is my normal size wreath which kind of fits within the perimeters of the little indent in the frame so you can see how big it is. And we're gonna go ahead and put up the one we just made, which is our White Rabbit House of Cards. So this is where I'm saying you wanna take a few moments. And this is where all that work on the outside where you're like, Add all those ribbon tails well because you can see them they're all extending away from this design oh, let's see I'm trying to get this one I come in between those so you can see those and I'm almost a little too short to get up to the top and uh, get that all feathered out. Um, but there you go. Everything is done, designed. Like I said, you can move your rabbit's ears whichever way you'd like. That's the only thing you can do. You can pose his arms, you can pose his ears. Everything else is pretty much done. And that is the final design. And you can see exactly how wide it is on a door. So can you put this on your front door? Yes. Should you protect it in inclement weather, which means if it's raining, if there's snow, if there's ice, if there's high wind, just like you would take care of something else that you have bought for your home and you put it out on your front porch, you're going to want to do the exact same thing here. You're going to want to bring that in during inclement weather or if you happen to have a completely covered porch or walkway, as long as your front door does not get um, hit with any type of weather, then you should be safe leaving it outside. But again, I would bring it in just to be on the safe side and then put it back out when you were done. But what do you guys think? Ah, uh, thanks. Hi, Vivian. Good afternoon from Washington. A fellow Washingtonian, just like me. Um, Elizabeth says you have a great, 
imagination. Julie said I would totally add cards. You know what, Julie? It'd be awesome if you made a rabbit. Kind of like the white rabbit. I don't call it Alice in Wonderland. It is the white rabbit's house of cards. So that is all it is inspired around. There is nothing that states anything else. It's just house of cards. Kind of like, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. No copyright infringement on that at all um, because I'm not theming it after, after anything else, but um, just something whimsical. This would make a great decoration in a um, man cave, like in a poker area or a game room kind of thing. It'd be really adorable. You could even add in some poker chips if you wanted just to kind of make it whimsical. Maybe add in a set of dice inside the ribbons if you wanted to make it more game themed. But um, that would be awesome. But there you guys go. If you'd like to purchase it, it's on the website pinned to the bottom. Also, like I said, again, there's news coming. Make sure you've signed up for my email newsletter because I'm reaching out to my email subscribers to give you some inside information. So make sure you signed up because it's coming to your email this Sunday. And that's pretty much about it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to come back and join me uh, Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific, which is 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern, where we're going to do another one of a kind design. So I can't wait to show you that one. All right, everyone. Well, have an amazing day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.